now on 18 News. One person is dead after a shooting in Seattle and two are injured. More on this breaking news straight ahead. And Governor Cuomo signing new legislation on Friday. What effects it will have on New York's presidential primary? We'll tell you more. This is the Eldridge Park Carousel. I'm J.D. Isles, and this is Quick History with Hidden Landmarks. It's time for the third installation of Hidden Landmarks. Stay tuned to learn more about one of Elmira's well-known fixtures of history. Live from your local news leader, this is 18 News Today. Good Saturday morning, Twin Tiers. I'm Alexis Bellamy. Today is September 14th. I'm Austin Evans. Thank you for waking up with us when you didn't have to for 18 <laughs> News Today because it is Saturday and we had to. And we had to, but and it feels really nice outside. It, it is. Unfortunately, it's raining right now. Oh, it, I yeah, didn't know that. Ra rain, move, <laughs> rain moving across the region right now. Otherwise, it should be a fairly nice day. Once this morning, once these morning showers start to move out, you can see across uh, the greater state a lot of rain through the central portion of the state. Zooming into the Twin Tiers, we can see Shimon County getting. Uh, the lion's share of the rain, along with uh, the eastern half of Schuyler County and into uh, Tompkins County as well. But right now we're at 61 degrees. Winds out of the south southwest at seven miles per hour. Uh, the wind has been moving this morning. Uh, we just got out of a wind advisory that the NWS Binghamton had us in. Uh, they have since canceled that. Temperatures across the region were in the low 60s for the most part, upper 50s down in the northern tier of Pennsylvania. And like I said, the wind has been moving 7 miles per hour in Elmira, 10 miles per hour in Troy, 14 miles per hour, per hour in Tioga, PA, uh, Tioga, New York, excuse me. Uh, no, that is PA. I'm getting confused. Uh, 14 miles per hour in that Tioga, 11 miles per hour in Bath. And over the next several hours, we're not going to warm up a whole lot up into the uh, low to mid 70s for the most part. And the wind speeds are going to continue throughout the day. I'll have details in my full forecast coming up in just a little bit. A shooting in downtown Seattle left one person dead and at least two others are injured. Officials say the shooting happened late Friday evening in the city's Westlake Station. Three male victims were transported to Harbor, Harborview Medical Center with injuries. Police say one victim died from the shooting. Two victims are still being treated. Officials say one victim is in critical condition. The other is in stable condition. Police say they do not have a suspect in custody. A suspect is believed to have fled the scene on foot. The investigation into the shooting is ongoing. From your local election headquarters, Governor Cuomo signing new legislation on Friday, setting New York's presidential primary for April 28, 2020. The state primary elections were recently moved from September to June to consolidate congressional and state elections on one date. Now the governor wants to take it a step further. He says he wants state lawmakers to pass legislation this January, putting the presidential primary along with state, local, and congressional primaries all on April 28th. The governor says this would save taxpayers $20 million. Andrew Sample, the former owner of this barbecue, of Sample This Barbecue, has entered a guilty plea. He, plead, he pleaded guilty to petty larceny, a Class A misdemeanor, in Shimon County Court on Friday morning. Last year, Sample faced grand larceny charges after a food supplier accused him of failing to pay them for their services. On Friday, Sample admitted to the judge that he knew the checks he wrote were bad. Even though Horseheads Town Court records indicate Sample owes four to five thousand dollars in back pay to multiple employees, Sample maintains that he had no money issues with his employees. There was no um, anything involvement with employees. This was 100 percent with vendors, and we were able to rectify. Um, like I said in the beginning, um, God is good. He's my provider. Sample will be sentenced to probation and will have to pay restitution. If he violates probation, he would face up to a year in jail. He's due back in court for sentencing on January 10th. 
One man has pleaded guilty to child sex abuse. Samuel Hay of Monroton has one, was one of two men charged with making child pornography after he and another man filmed themselves committing sex acts with an underage girl. The other man involved in the video has yet to be indicted. Hay will be sentenced in November. For more on all of these stories, for all of these top local stories, head online to MyTwinTears.com and be sure to download the 18 News app available for Android and iPhones. The second segment of the Alternative Energy Series is now available on MyTwinTears.com. Forms of renewable energy is one of the fastest growing energy sources, according for around two-thirds of increase in global power. In this week's segment, our 18 storm meteorologist Jessica Camuto visited the proposed site for the new solar farm project in Steuben County. This project is just another way the county is working towards producing clean energy. The old landfill uh, at this point can't really serve many other purposes. We put the garbage in there and it's, it's closed. This is a good way, I think, for us to be able to get some, some additional beneficial value out of that site. If you are a NYSEG customer in Steuben County, you may be able to benefit from this project. To view the entire story about the new solar farm, visit our website, mytwintiers.com. Many children and their families visited the Corning Observatory on Friday evening for the annual Kids' Night. Our 18 News meteorologist Jessica Camuto has more on Kids' Night and exactly what everyone did and how they enjoyed themselves. Kids Night 2019 was held Friday evening at the Corning Observatory. Families and kids of all ages attended the event for a night full of astronomical fun. We have astronomical crafts. We do comet demonstrations so kids understand how comets work. Uh, we also have tours of our facility, which includes the one-tenth scale model of the 200-inch Hale Telescope at Mount Palomar, California. All who attended the event enjoyed creating the crafts, watching the comet demonstration, and there were even a few who really enjoyed seeing a bat. But but it wasn't just children and families that attended this event. Molly Shibatov is a former Corning Community College student who came back to help young kids realize that science can actually be fun. It's pretty great. It's kind of nostalgic, you know, being a student and working here is one thing, but after graduating and moving on to the big real world, right, it's, it's kind of nice to come back, you know. I really hope that kids get an interest in STEM because, you know, STEM can be kind of this overbearing, scary thing, right, when you're in school, but as a kid, we really want people to realize that it's fun. Science can be cool and, you know, it doesn't always have to be black and white. You know, lots of color here and toys and games and everything. It's really about getting kids interested in STEM at a younger age. If you have an interest in astronomy, there is a way that you can get involved right here in the Corning community. I want them to know that the Armada Corning Astronomical Society exists. We have a regular monthly meeting. Every, uh, every month on the first Friday of every month. We have some great speakers uh, and the meetings are open to the public. If you were unable to attend Kids Night on Friday evening, the observatory is open to the public during the first Friday of the month from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Reporting in Corning, Jessica Camuto, 18 News. So nice to see kids enjoying science and really learning something. The time is now 6.08 and still to come on 18 News today. Fotos Dulos, the estranged husband of missing New Canaan mother Jennifer Dulos, is back in court this week. What happens next in this case? Details coming up. A wet one this morning. However, we should clear out for walking. Your favorite four-legged friends, definitely not a good walk for cats if you're one of those people that walk your cat shower this morning. It will likely remain wet throughout the day. Mild temperatures with cloudy skies expected. More news and weather after the break. You're watching 18 News Today.
Fotos Dulos, the estranged husband of missing New Canaan mother Jennifer Dulos, appeared in court on Thursday. Dulos has entered a not guilty plea to a second tampering with evidence charge. On September 4th, Dulos was arrested for the second time on charges of tampering with evidence in the disappearance of his estranged wife, Jennifer. Following to, um, Thursday's hearing, Mr. Dulos' attorney said they have three words for the court bring it on. Jennifer Dulos has been missing since May 24th. She was in a contentious divorce and a custody battle with her husband at the time of her disappearance. Officials say two people who look like Fotis and his girlfriend, Michelle Traconis, were seen on surveillance video throwing out trash bags in Hartford shortly after Jennifer went missing. Traconis is also charged with hindering prosecution and tampering with evidence. Following the hearing, the judge issued a gag order in the case. It states no information will be provided from this date forward regarding this case until the order is lifted or additional arrests are made. Ten students at Simmons College in Kentucky suddenly lose their scholarships, with administrators blaming a feud between Papa John's and its estranged founder, John Schnatner. The Papa John's founder donated a million dollars to the predominantly black college on earlier this month. Each student was told they, wouldn't, they would receive $2,000 each from a $20,000 scholarship. But the president of Simmons College says he was told on Thursday the company was withdrawing the money. Papa John says administrators at Simon College declined the scholarships. In a statement, the company says school officials told them last week they would not be moving forward with the scholarship program. They also released an email from the college rejecting the scholarships. But a school employee who wrote the email says she was instructed to do so by a Papa John's executive. New heartbreak this morning in St. Louis. One mother shares her devastation after losing her teenage son to gun violence. Her son's shooting just hours after a three-year-old's death, raising the number of kids killed by gunfire this year in the area to at least 23. NBC's Ron Allen reports. Tonight, the mother of 13-year-old Clifford Swan is left with only memories. Funny. He was outgoing. He did jokes all the time. He loved school. Swan was killed last night while walking with two older friends through an apartment complex. Investigators arresting an 18-year-old. I just wish I would not let my son He's okay. go it's not over there. It's not your fault. It's your fault. It's not your fault. Swan's shooting came just hours after the death of three-year-old Rodney March, who police say got hold of a loaded, unsecured gun where he lived and shot himself. These latest incidents bring in the total number of children shot and killed this year to 23, the youngest just two years old. Everyone that's over the age of nine years old is able to say, I'm afraid of being shot. It's real. It's horrific. We're in a real state of trauma. Police blame a flood of high-powered weapons. Where are all these guns coming from? People coming into the community and selling guns, stolen guns. That's a big problem. Police say they still need more help from witnesses, while the St. Louis area's kids are under siege. Ron Allen, NBC News. Still to come on 18 News today, just because summer is wrapping up doesn't mean that the fun has to stop. I have plenty for you to do this Saturday and what's happening today when we get back. But first, Austin, what is the weather going to be like today for people who want to get out? It's going to be mostly cloudy today. Walking out the door for Saturday plans. Don't forget your umbrella. We have showers moving through this morning. Mild temperatures today with highs in the low to mid-70s. I'll have all the details on your upcoming week after the break.
Starting the weekend off with some showers this morning. That's thanks to a cold front that is moving slowly across the region. And we're going to have a fairly mild day today with a mostly pleasant day tomorrow. It's going to be windy throughout the day as well. And you can see 61 degrees right now in Elmira, south southwest wind at 7 miles per hour. And like I said, the wind has been moving. We just, uh, the NWS Binghamton has just canceled the wind advisory, but the wind is still quite strong out there with. Some stronger gusts, so just be mindful of that if you're out driving, especially if you drive anything uh, large or tall that can really catch the wind. Temperatures across the region were in the upper 50s, lower 60s for uh, across the board. 61 in Elmira, 62 in Watkins Glen, and down in the northern tier, 59 in Troy, 58 in Tioga, PA, and 58 down in Wellsboro. And like I said, wind speeds are moving seven miles per hour in Elmira, 14. In Tioga, PA, 11 miles per hour in Bath, with gusts uh, approaching uh, 20 miles per hour at times. Uh, however, the wind advisory has been canceled. Satellite radar across the region, we see this, uh, this line of showers and thunderstorms moving across the central part of the state, zooming into the Twin Tiers. You can see a lot of it has moved out of Chemung County and into uh, Tioga County, New York, and into Tompkins County, moving out of the region and once it does move out of the region we should stay clear for the most part we could see some more rain right around the noon uh, right around noon time and just some very spotty showers through the afternoon but will mainly be cloudy after this rain moves out this morning and will stay mostly dry with mild temperatures thinking lows in the uh, highs excuse me in the low to mid 70s going into tomorrow however we could see some Showers and uh, some showers pop up in uh, tomorrow afternoon, but the main threat is in the overnight hours and early uh, Monday morning. And there is plenty of moisture with this system, uh, just under half an inch expected in Spencer, just under a quarter of an inch expected in Elmira, mainly through dry, the central uh, twin tiers is going to get most of the rain with this system. High of 73 today. Showers early with limited sunshine. It's going to be breezy throughout the day. Tonight dropping down to the mid 50s. We're going to be staying cloudy. And as we go into the tonight, the uh, wind is going to calm down. So we'll get some of that patchy valley fog. And over the next seven days, we're going to see some uh, chances of showers tomorrow and going into the beginning of the work week, decreasing clouds and sunny on Monday. And we're going to warm up going into late week. Get ready to set your sights on something amazing today. Seaplanes flying and landing, exotic cars, and a debut of $75,000 worth of Curtis Electric motorcycles. Over a dozen seaplanes fly in and over Cayuca Lake while the streets of Hammondsport host exotic cars. Lamborghinis, Fiat, Porsches, as well as an American audio of both classic and exotic cars. Over 5,000 people are expected to visit the show over the weekend. The event takes place at Hammondsport, New York in Locus of Activity Depot Park and the village of Hammondsport today starting at 10 and goes until 4. As the summer solstice comes to a close, come out and say goodbye to the season in the right way with the Lawrenceville Fire Department. They urge the community to come out to 17907 Route 287 in Tioga for the Summer Biker Bash. There will be a poker run, giveaways, and so much more. All proceeds will go towards replacing equipment and materials they lost in a fire last July. Today, the Woodhull Fire Department is teaming up with the Community Day Committee for the main parade. Come check out some antique cars, floats, bands, and more. All are welcome to attend. The parade lineup starts at 1030, and the parade starts at 11. The time is now 621, and still to come on 18 News Today, one of the most popular, if not the most popular, clothing store says you could be seeing a downsize in the amount of stores. We'll tell you what you need to know when we get back.
Forever 21 could be closing a store near you. The fashion retailer is struggling with expensive leases and declining mall traffic. Bloomberg reported Friday the company plans to shut down at least 100 locations as part of a reconstru reconstructing plan. Those locations have not yet been identified. The Wall Street Journal reported the family-owned business could file for bankruptcy as soon as tomorrow. Seniors drawing Social Security could see bigger checks in 2020. But there is some bad news. While checks are forecasted to grow next year, it won't be as much as this year. According to an, estate se an, an estimate from the Senior Citizens League, seniors could see a 1.6 percent boost in 2020. Now that's down from 2.8 percent increase in 2019. And Medicare Part B premiums are also likely to rise, meaning it'll likely be a wash in the end. Weather on the go. Download the 18 Storm Team weather app for hourly forecasts for your location. It is free on iOS and Android devices. Mild day today with showers rolling through this morning. I'll have one last look at the seven day forecast after the break. You're watching 18 News Today. Welcome back. Before we go, Austin is going to give us one more look at, at side, and hopefully it won't still be raining. So the rain has moved out of uh, our, like, immediate area. It is still in our eastern counties. Today should be mild after the rain moves out. High 73 today, and it's going to be a little bit breezy out there, so just be mindful of that. And going into the rest of the weekend, we're going to warm up just a little bit tomorrow. And uh, then going into next weekend, we're going to warm up even more with chances of showers and thunderstorms with that southern heat, uh, that uh, summer-like heat that we're going to get. So uh, there are trade-offs, unfortunately. That weather is what I like to see. Just the sun, a little bit of clouds, barely any rain. That was perfect. Might I recommend we are halfway through September. We are. Isn't we're that going weird? In, we're getting into <laughs> fall and then after fall. And, and that's it. That's so weird. The time is now 627 and still to come on 18 News Today. This is the Eldridge Park Carousel. I'm J.D. Isles, and this is Quick History with Hidden Landmarks. It's time for the third installation of Hidden Landmarks. Stay tuned to learn more about one of Elmira's well-known fixtures of history.
Now on 18 News. This is the Eldridge Park Carousel. I'm J.D. Isles, and this is Quick History with Hidden Landmarks. It's time for the third installation of Hidden Landmarks. Stay tuned to learn more about one of Elmira's well-known fixtures of history. And it's a glass-blowing event like you haven't seen before, and just in time for the fall season, where and when you can go for your special seasonal glass pieces coming up. Plus, an update for you this morning on the vacant monastery in the town of Elmira. What plans the city has for it and how it will be used. Live from your local news leader, this is 18 News Today. Good Saturday morning, Twin Tiers. I'm Alexis Bellamy. Today is September 14th. I'm Austin Evans. Thank you for waking up with us for 18 News Today. On this fall morning, it, it feels, feels like, like a fall, fall morning outside, but I know we're going to be planning to have lots of sun, right? We're gonna, well, uh, not today oh, okay. or tomorrow. <laughs> Sorry. Um, it's gonna, it'll be mostly cloudy today. After these showers move out of the region, you can see they're moving across uh, the greater uh, central New York State area and zooming into the Twin Tiers, you can see them moving across uh, Tioga County, New York, and Tompkins uh, County just moving out of our viewing area. And right now, temperatures in Elmira, 61 degrees. Winds out of the south-southwest at 7 miles per hour. We were in that wind advisory. The NWS Binghamton has since canceled that, but we are going to stay quite breezy throughout the day. Temperatures across the region right now, we're in the upper 50s, lower 60s across the board, 60 degrees in Sayre, 59 in Spencer, 60 in Watkins Glen, like I said, 61 in Elmira. And the wind is still moving, even though that advisory was canceled. 10 miles per hour in Sayre, 9 miles per hour in Watkins Glen, and in Tioga, PA, 13 miles per hour. And over the next several hours, we're not going to warm a whole lot. We're about high in the low to mid 70s. Mostly cloudy throughout the day, and the windy, uh, gusty conditions are going to remain. The shower is going to move out this morning, and I'll have details coming up in my full forecast in just a little bit. It is time for the third installation of the Hidden Landmark series. Host JD Isles takes us behind the scenes to one of Elmira's most famous fixtures of history, the Eldridge Carousel. This is the Eldridge Park Carousel. I'm J.D. Isles, and this is Quick History with Hidden Landmarks. So where are we today? We are, of course, in the middle of Eldridge Park. So I'm going to be talking about specifically this carousel and its rebirth. But before we do that, we need to cover some basics about the history of Eldridge Park. Dr. Edwin Eldridge, who was a successful physician and businessman in Binghamton, New York, moved to Elmira in 1857. Uh, he set up medical practice and he continued his business ventures. In 1860, he, he decided he wanted to build a park and Eldridge Park was born. Uh, it started out as a garden and picnic groves, but it steadily over the years evolved into a fully functioning amusement park. Sadly, it closed in 1988. On September 11, 2002, one year after the terrorist attacks on New York City, the city of Elmira held a candlelight vigil here in Eldridge Park. There was a guest speaker there that night, uh, a Dr. Robert Lyon, who is a forensic dentist who is involved, sadly, in the identification of victims from that tragedy. That night, Dr. Lyon spoke fondly about growing up in, in Elmira and specifically growing up with Eldridge Park as his childhood playground. Um, that candlelight vigil served as a catalyst for him to decide to form a group to rebuild this carousel. In 2003, the Eldridge Park Carousel Preservation Society was born. Now, you need to realize all of the animals from the carousel were sold off in 1989. So they were all gone. But the turntable, the mechanism, and the building was still here. So they started diligently having all of the animals carved anew, uh, with the exception of one original horse on the carousel, which is Sylvia. On May 27, 2006, a gala was held, and the carousel roared back to life for the first time. Since then, 
The Eldridge Park Carousel Preservation Society has moved mountains, rebuilding this park brick by brick. This, my friends, is where the heart of nostalgia beats most strongly here in Elmira, New York. If you ever wonder if you can do the impossible, you need to look no further than what was accomplished around this small lake in 16 short years. The Preservation Society has rebuilt our childhood and made sure that its legacy will live on. Thank you very much for joining me for Quick History with Hidden Landmarks. I'll see you next week. The Corning Museum of Glass is featuring festive pumpkin glass blowing this fall until November 30th. The glass blowing experience allows you to work up close and personal with glass, so you can be the creator of glass pumpkins. You can choose a color for your glass pumpkin and work with professional glass blowers to shape the pumpkin by blowing air through the moving blowpipe. The professional glass blowers will then add the glass stem to your pumpkin. We have different seasonal things. Right now we just started off pumpkin season, so we are uh, making pumpkins, pumpkin after pumpkin after pumpkin. So people can come in, choose colors for their pumpkins, uh, make a nice curly little stem and uh, have a pumpkin for uh, Halloween. This hands-on glass blowing event is a great way to kick off the fall. Your glass pumpkin makes a great gift and will be ready for pickup the next day. For more information, you can head to our website, mytwintiers.com. We now have a date for the grand opening of Home Goods in Big Flats. It's set to be held on October 27th. The popular home decor and furniture store will open in the Old Bed Bath and Beyond location in Consumer Square. Home Goods will be helping will be holding hiring events over the next 3 weeks starting this coming Monday. The hiring event will take place Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. through 1 p.m. As Child Passenger Safety Week begins this weekend, the Governor's Traffic Safety Committee will host child safety seat events through the state. These events are meant to help parents ensure their child's restraint is properly installed and fitted correctly. Child Passenger Safety Week starts September 15th and lasts through the 21st. And related to child vehicle safety in November of this year, a new law will take effect requiring all children under the age of two to be in a rear-facing car seat. For more on all of our top stories, head online to MyTwinTears.com and be sure to download the AT News app available for Android and iPhones. The Roman Catholic Diocese of Rochester, New York filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection on Thursday. It comes in the wake of a series of lawsuits against the diocese, most of them sex assault cases. They were filed after the Child Victims Act went into effect last month. It lifts the statute of limitations on crimes for one year. That means for a year, accusers can file civil claims no matter how long ago the alleged abuse happened. Nearly 60 new cases have been filed so far. Rochester's bishop said the claims could exceed their financial resources. The bankruptcy protection would allow the church to continue to operate while it reorganizes its finances and puts together funds to pay compensation to accusers. We have an update for you on that vacant monastery in the town of Elmira. The Town of Elmira Planning Board has approved the site plan application for the School of Good Works. This marks the final step in the process for them. Now, before the, the new owner, Joe Works, can occupy the building, he must obtain a certificate of occupancy from the town's code enforcement. This will likely take some time, and we'll keep you updated as soon as we learn more. The time is now 6.39 and still to come on 18 News Today. One man was sent to Bellevue after he snuck a weapon into a building in NYC and began threatening himself. We have that story and shocking surveillance footage. You guys know I like coffee, but I just realized you can apparently order a bucket at Java the Hut on our graphics. I do really like coffee, maybe not that much. And if you like coffee, get a large for this rainy Saturday morning. Highs in the lower 70s. I'll have details on the next on the coming week after the break. You're watching 18 News Today.
Police say a man has been charged after sneaking a sword into the Empire State Building on Friday. Police identified the man as 35-year-old Matthew Dixon of Virginia. He's been charged with criminal possession of a weapon. According to police, Dixon went into the building wearing pajama pants and a concealed two-foot sword in a cane. Police are calling the weapon a sword stick. As you can see from the surveillance video, take a look. When officers arrived, Dixon did drop the weapon. Tourists at the observatory say they saw the sword firsthand and wonder how the man was able to get into the building. I just saw a guy that had uh, what looked like a sword pointing to his heart. How did you get that up here? You know, if it was metal, if it was, how to get through the detectors, you know. Dixon was taken to custody and transported to Bellevue Hospital. A Pennsylvania toy maker is bringing equity to an old fashioned plaything, thanks in part to an observant six year old. Those little green army men are best sellers for BMC Toys out of Scranton, and they just so happen to be the toy of choice for Vivian Lord from Little Rock, Arkansas. One day, Vivian noticed that none of the little green figurines were women, so she wrote a letter. The guy on the other end of that letter was Jeff Immel, the helm of BMC Toys. As it turns out, Jeff was already working on what he calls Plastic Army Women Project. With the, pro with the prototype done, he got a last push from Vivian and is finally taking the product to market. A body was found rolled up in a carpet on a Manhattan sidewalk. A Starbucks worker first spotted the body on first spotted the body outside of a location in Harlem Thursday morning. The remains were wrapped in a plastic bag inside of a carpet. Authorities said the man was fully clothed but had no identification. He appeared to be in his 20s or late 30s, and investigators say he may have had wounds to his head. The medical examiner is working to determine what caused his death. A shopping cart was located near the scene as well, and investigators believe it was used to carry the body up the hill where it was dumped. A new law aims to prevent allergy emergencies from happening in daycares in New York State. Our capital correspondent, Karina Capabianca, has more on Elijah's law. For parents of children with allergies, sending their child to daycare can be scary. One out of every 13 kids in America has some sort of a food allergy, mostly peanuts, and that's two in every classroom, so that's a lot of kids. But a new law mandates that daycare facilities have training and policies in place to be ready if a child goes into anaphylactic shock. It's very timely to get this bill passed because of the increasing numbers of young children that have life threatening allergies. In a statement, Governor Cuomo said the measure will give parents peace of mind and will help ensure daycare workers receive the right training to respond to emergencies and prevent tragedies. The big thing is to increase training and awareness. Uh, be responsive to the parents and their uh, action plan, paperwork, that kind of thing is what uh, the Wises Law is best at. According to the governor's office, school districts in the state already have policies in place regarding food allergies and anaphylactic shock. In Albany, Karina Capabianca. The time is now 645 and we will have more news and weather when we get back. Stay tuned.
Welcome back. If you have a, if you had a little bit of uh, trouble waking up this morning, that rain always makes it harder for me to wake up. Thankfully, that is moving out of the region right now, 61 degrees in Elmira. You can see a very thick cloud deck over downtown Elmira and temperatures across the region. We're in the upper 50s, uh, lower 60s with uh, just a little bit of wind moving through the region. That wind advisory has been canceled. It was in effect until 8 a.m. Uh, upper 50s, lower 60s, like I said, 61 in Elmira, 60 in Watkins Glen, 59 down in Troy, 58 in Tioga, PA. And that wind is still moving 13 miles per hour in Troy, 11 miles per hour in Tioga, PA, 7 miles per hour here in Elmira, Common Spencer, and in Wellsboro. And you can see the rain moving through central New York, diving into the Twin Tiers. It is starting to move out of our region. It's just in the eastern parts of Tioga County, New York, and uh, just ver barely still in uh, Tompkins County. There is a little bit more on the way, but it's going to be more scattered rather than this, uh, these showers and thunderstorms that were more widespread. Right around noon, we could see some scattered uh, showers and some uh, pockets of it being quite heavy across the northern tier. And going into the afternoon, that's the way it's going to be with some more scattered showers right around that uh, evening commute time. And in the overnight hours, we're going to clear out uh, with the exception of the clouds that are going to remain, especially in the western portion of our viewing area. Tomorrow is going to be very similar to today with the cloud situation. We're going to stay quite cloudy with some uh, isolated showers in the late afternoon hours possible. The main threat, however, is in the overnight and early morning hours uh, for the beginning of your work week. We start off Monday uh, with showers and thunderstorms possible and uh, with uh, cloudy conditions. We can see there is plenty of moisture with this system. Our uh, model has updated, so we're uh, right at 0.15 of an inch in Elmira after all the rain and uh, just under half an inch in Spencer after all this rain passes by Monday. Today, high of 73. Showers early, like I said, and they are moving out. Limited sunshine today with breezy conditions uh, staying with us throughout the day. Tonight, dropping down into the mid-50s. The wind should calm down just a little bit. We're going to see some of that patchy valley fog in those areas that that happens a lot. And over the next seven days, we're going to see a warming trend right at the beginning of the week, but we're going to cool down uh, significantly right around Tuesday. We're going to warm back up for late week with chances of showers and thunderstorms. It's time for week two of high school football in New York. In week one, Corning rolled past Vestal at home, and they're looking for another home win in week two. Corning hosting 1-0 Ithaca at Corning Memorial Stadium, and the Hawks came out firing right out of the gate. We hop right into action here, and it's a strong run up the middle by Justin Rodriguez, putting six on the board for Corning. Then a couple of minutes later, Blake Van Wart Dropping back the pass, and he looks to throw, and he finds junior running back Max Freeman on a long shot down the field. Corning would eventually punch that one in. Then, still early in the first half here, it's Justin Rodriguez coming off the edge again, and nobody is going to catch Rodriguez as he throws up six more on the board for the Hawks. Corning moves to 2-0 as they win big 65 to 12. Waverly trying to move to 2-0 at home against Johnson City. Johnson City down 14-0 in the second quarter. Corey Castelline goes deep over the middle and complete to Jaden Johns for a Wildcats first down. A couple of plays later, Johnson City turns it over. They fumble and Caden Terzik recovers for Waverly on the ensuing drive with under a minute to go in the half. The eighth grader Joe Tommaso rolls out and fights Jalen McCarty in the end zone for the touchdown. Waverly is off to a 2 0 start. They win 41 to 6. The Seneca Indians are hosting Bainbridge Guilford on a gorgeous night we had for some football last night. And it's going to be the Seneca Indians who take the lead. Derek Lewis off of the quarterback keeper. Who 
He punches it in to make a 6 to 0 Indians. Then on the ensuing kickoff, Bainbridge Guilford's Gabe Sherman on the return, but he fumbles the ball and Hunter Holly picks it up and nobody is going to touch him as he takes it in for 6 for the Indians. The Seneca Indians go on to get their first win of the season, 44 to 12. Tioga in action at home against Newark Valley first quarter. Tioga down 7 to 0 when Brady Worthing rolls out on the bootleg and Worthing decides to keep it and he heads up field for a Tigers first down. That sets up this run by Emmett Wood. He takes it 15 yards for the touchdown. A nice hard run there. That ties it at seven. Newark Valley answers right back. Mike Wandell airing it out deep and complete to Jake Armstrong, who makes the catch. That would lead to a Newark Valley touchdown, but Tioga comes back to win this one 24 to 20. The Tigers are now 2 and 0 this season. Now we head down the highway and over to section five where it's Haverling hosting Attica. We jump right into the action here on a run play by Attica that tricks the defense and nobody is going to touch senior running back Jacob Gross. He scores on a 49-yard touchdown run for the Devils. A great run there by the senior. Then we head to the other end of the field where Haverling has the ball on the 21-yard line and it's quarterback Ian D. Dominic dropping back the pass and he's looking for the end zone, but it's picked off by Attica's Tyler Meyer who returns a huge return for Attica, bringing the ball back over 30 yards, and that interception will set them up for this. Attica is going to run the ball again here, and this time it's Zachary Strelick who cuts to the outside, and nobody is going to catch him. He goes 51 yards to the house. Attica rolls in this one by a score of 48 to 6, and that'll do it for a look at sports this morning. For 18 Sports, I'm Chuck Brain. An, AD, an FDA advisory committee is recommending that the agency approve a peanut allergy treatment, the first of its kind. The vote came after a panel of health experts listened, listened to data about the safety and effectiveness of the drug, palforzea. The pill would be for those between the ages of 4 and 17 and would expose them to increasing doses of peanut protein. During the trial, 67% were able to eat about two peanuts with no allergic reaction. But today, those living with peanut allergies spoke about how the treatment could help their normal lives. Be careful on wet roadways this morning with showers moving through, leading to a mostly cloudy day. Highs in the low to mid 70s expected. I'll have one more look at the seven day forecast after the break.
You're watching 18 News Today. Welcome back. And before we go, we cannot leave you without letting you know what's on your calendar for its national this day. Today is National Creation Day, Creative Day, Live Creatively. It's time to let your imagination run wild. Today is National Live Creative Day. So take an extra time, take an extra minute to experiment, discover, dream, unleash your inner child. What's your inner child, Austin? Uh, probably video games. Okay. Let's go do that. Live creatively. Write a mass. Write a novel. Paint something. Get write out of your novel. routine. Yeah. Just casually <laughs> sit down this afternoon. Write a novel. It's Easy. a. It's about doing something creative, something you've never done before, and just getting out there. And I think today is going to be the day to do that. Today would be a good day to do that. Awesome. It's a, it's a, we got some rain moving out, moving out this morning. We could have some scattered showers throughout the day. It's going to be mostly cloudy today and tomorrow as well, with some scattered showers possible tomorrow. Decreasing clouds on Monday, and we're warming up just a little bit. Going into midweek, we cool off with a passing cold front. Actually, it's, we go into high pressure uh, throughout the midweek, but at the end of the week, we warm up again, but with that summer-like heat brings summer-like chances of showers and thunderstorms. So, uh, high of 79 on Friday, I which love is that. well above average. And it's September, like you said. I think that's just amazing, and we're so lucky for that. They're going to get more few and far to come by. So oh, well, we'll, we'll take it while we can. Thank you for joining us to WTM 18 News Today. The Today Show is next. Have a good one.